Welcome from Muscatine. We have reached the midway point of the high school football season. Hello, everyone. I'm Roland Glenbine alongside Chris Sanderson. Homecoming tonight, the Muskies host Davenport West. Falcons fly into town with a 3 and one record. Chris, we talked about playoffs a lot, and, and things are shaping up kind of the way, you know, after last week, they need to shape up. You got uh, five games left. Those last two games might be the easiest on your schedule. Five and four will get you in the playoffs, history tells us. Right. So if you get those last two wins, the next two weeks might be the toughest games on your schedule all year at Linmar and against Pleasant Valley. That means tonight, really, it, it, you can't really underscore how big this one is. Playoffs really kind of hinge on the outcome tonight. They absolutely do. And as we've talked about, we had a couple of games early on that we could have picked up that put us in a position where we now got two big games we have to win, like you said. So it's going to be interesting to see how Ty and the team balance this attack and try and figure out how they can win this game without showing a hand and still have something left to play against Linmar and Pleasant Valley. We'll get more into pregame here in a moment, but let's take a break and uh, listen in on this. The band honors our nation with the playing of our uh, Star Spangled Banner. Broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was.
Kowalski. And here they come. And uh, there we are. They're out onto the field. We're getting closer to game time. Let's talk about this game a little bit more. Must be coming to and two. Falcons three and one. But that is a bit misleading. Look at who they play. And that might tell you a little bit more. There's three wins. They're coming in down to the fourth. The team has won three. Oh, 
Rutherford is fast, completes the Gavin Brookhart. Braden Alger with the tackle. So four yards on the first down play. And no huddle, here comes the Muskies. 38, second to six. Out of the game today. Jaden Meador and Falcons will start off about the same spot on the field that the Muskies started off right around the 33 yard line just underway tonight glad you could join us on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network on the many platforms uh, this game is available tell a friend we did have a flag on that last play didn't see that that's way over on the far sideline and that one was on the west, so uh, that's a nice little break there for the Muskies. Instead of the 33, they'll mark this one all the way back near the 20-yard line. And this west offense, very balanced offense when it comes to throw pass. Led by a senior quarterback, Luke Matson. 533 yards in the air so far this season. Matson out of the gun to start tonight. He's got two receivers to his left, one to the right, and he'll hand off. And nice yardage on first down for the Falcons. That was Jordan Tate all the way out to the 25. Called a gain of six on the play. So a second and four now for West. The Muskies lining up in that straight line until they see what the offense does, then they'll adapt. Four receiver set here on second down and four. Matson out of the pistol. He's back to throw out into the flat, has his man brought down right near the sticks. Depends on the spot. Looks like they're going to give him enough for the first down. So that was caught by uh, Jaden Meter. He's the top receiver on this West team. Comes in 239 yards receiving on the year. We got a player down. They'll check on him and we'll take a quick break. Be right back here on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. 
15, Bear of Muscatine, Muscatine Church of Christ, H&J yeah, Farms. It takes a village animal rescue and resources, impact fitness and nutrition, Zach Fry at the Lee Agency, Big Brothers Big Sisters of Muscatine, Muscatine Symphony Orchestra, Josiah Anderson at Real Estate Resource Associates, Star Collectibles, Harper Cycling and Fitness, Muscatine Charities, and a special shout out to Mississippi Pearl Photography for all those great pictures of your Muscatine Muscles. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using back here in Muscatine Cash Hodges the injured Muskie on that play he uh, jogged off the field under his own power that was good to see nothing serious there in first and ten for the Falcons they'll hand it off right up the middle is Tate Tate still rumbling forward picks up about nine yards on that carry Truesdale brought him down. Second and one upcoming for West. Good crowd on hand tonight. Rather silent right now, though, looking for something to cheer about. Again, a three receiver set. Matson out of the pistol. He'll hand off again to Tate. Tate running hard. Right side cuts up. Has the first down. Has much more than that into Muskie territory inside the 40-yard line, and the Falcons get the first big play of the night. You know, it's interesting. When you look at the power index put out by Bound, they've got the Muskies at 16th and 5A. They've got West at 9th and 5A. Mm -hmm. Even with those lower the opponent's records all below 500. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It, it's still got that imbalance. Not sure what's driving that. Probably a big uh, factor on wins losses, I'm guessing. There's a high snap brought down, and Tate again running right up the middle near the 30 yard line. It's Their strength of schedule factor variable mm -hmm. isn't very strong in this, I guess, is what I was saying. Yeah, definitely. And this isn't something you see very often. Davenport West and their opponents are both averaging 19.3 points a game. Point differential, zero. Back to throw, Matson. Pump fake goes deep, has the man, overthrows it. Well, he had six if he hit his man, but uh, got a little zealous on the throw. And it comes up empty. Third down in four, and a little bit of a break there for the Muskies. On uh, Matson, a little too strong, trying to connect down the near sideline. If you're thinking field goal, well, West does have a couple on the season. However, their kicker, not all that reliable. He's just three of eight on extra points this year. Two of three on field goals, does have a 40 yarder. There's a high snap again, the right up the middle and the Mosky defense meets him at the spot, nowhere to go, and fourth down upcoming for the Falcons. Eli Trozen there first, got some help. And fourth down and two, let's see, West keeping the offense on the field, that would be a 47 yard field goal. This is pretty much go for it territory in high school. Fourth down and two from the 30. Also in Tecmo Super Bowl. Every time, down, every four downs go for it, isn't it? Got it a is. lot of movement oh up front. Boy. Who moved first? Movement on both sides. And they're going to get the West Falcons. So, bit of a break there. We talk about those 50 50 type calls. That one goes Muscatine's direction. Anytime you get the offensive line moving, even if the defense kind of moved first, usually in high school, that's going to be an offensive penalty. Four receiver set. They're still going to go for it here. Fourth and seven. 
Back to throw, Matts into the flat, has his man, has the first down, has more. And the West the Falcons flying high out the gate tonight. Striking on that fourth and seven play, touchdown. Marvin Neely. Well, you had your chance to get off the field. West converts on fourth down, and now it's going to try the extra point. And like we said, this has been an adventure for West this year, just three of eight on the season. I right, snap, the kick is up, the kick is good. And with 5.35 to go in quarter one, West strikes first, they lead 7-0. At Hustler Turf, quality matters, especially in the strength and durability of our mowers. So you know your Hustler will stand the test of time. We think the difference is obvious. With our welded fabricated steel deck, high strength 11 gauge one piece frame, and the precision control of our smooth track steering, anyone can mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Rivo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing, a family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week, Rivo Incorporated, skill, knowledge, and tools to solve the messiest problems. Roland Glumbine, Chris Anderson back here in Muscatine. Muskies have to play from behind here out of the gate on homecoming. As the Falcons try an onside kick and oh boy, the Muskies caught falling asleep. That's a tough one. That was easy pickings right there for West. Beautifully executed. And the referee points the wrong direction. It will be West Ball. And that is tough right there. Great starting field position for West. Already up 7-0. And this is where you hope your defense, who just gave up a touchdown, can come back out, fire it up, and stop. And that, that's, just, that's not even just lack of execution. That's just lack of mental, like knowing what you're doing right there. Everybody was peeling back the block and here's the little lateral swing out to Tate. Tate picks up about four, maybe five yards on first down. Nobody stayed home on that kick. Well, we expect this to be a close game and you expect, you look at that, West expects it to be a close game too and coming out here early, taking a a little tricky play and making it uh, work. And that's one of those 50-50s. I mean, it's a little more than an aggressive 50-50, but if you get something like that to fall, it's going to make a big difference in the game. It's an aggressive call, and it paid off, and there's a run right up the middle. And again, the musky defense allows them to move the sticks. Someone's just gonna have to step up and make a play right now. This, this musky team a bit shell-shocked right now. Got hit with the old one-two combo. Giving up that big fourth down conversion for a touchdown and then the onside kick. They're a bit stunned right now. Here's the run to Tate. Tate met at the line of scrimmage. Nothing there, Frankie on the tackle. So first head coach, first year head coach Dominique Nunn, going forward on fourth down, kicking the onside kick. He's come out aggressive here. Well, 
Just the second game on the road for West this season. Everything, all their wins have been at Brady Street. Throw out in the flat. The ball is caught out there. Had to go to the knees to catch it, so no advancement after the catch. And got a big third down, and uh, we'll call it three upcoming. Late in this first quarter, 318 on the clock. Very fast moving first quarter tonight. Three receivers set. Matson out of the pistol, looks to throw. Has his man and he drops it. Well, not a good throw right there. Had the receiver open. That was meter. Incomplete fourth down, but again, we expect West to go for it. They went for it last time, fourth and seven, fourth and three. Pretty much the same spot on the field. Again, they're keeping the offense out on the field. Trying to make it two for two on fourth down conversions tonight. Three receivers set. Matson out of the pistol. He'll give off Tate. Tate met and stopped. So the Muskie defense comes up big on this fourth down and the offense will take over after that big stop. Needed that one, nice job by that defense getting off the field. And now the Muskies can work on getting this game all tied up. 2.58 left first quarter. Thompson comes out. Brooke Hart comes in. Wing formation. The turn to give to Kozad. Kozad met at the line. A strong running to still to pick up about five yards on the carry. Missed it last week. Ty Kozad becoming the school's all-time career rushing leader. Again, the give to Kozad makes the first guy miss. Gets up to nearly the 40-yard line. Third down and two upcoming. Neely credited with the tackle on that last play. Under two minutes to go here first quarter. And in a big third down upcoming for this musky offense. Haven't moved the chains yet tonight. Just the second possession of the evening. Don't want to go three and out twice. Full house backfield. Curtis takes the snap. Gives to Kozad. Kozad has the first down near the 45. Called a gain of five more for Kozad. And the Muskies move the sticks. The way West has come out tonight aggressively out of the gate, you kind of want to answer back here. Don't want to give the ball back without scoring some points. This time Cooper Yao has it. Yao has a hole and has it inside OS territory just across the 50 yard line. Cooper Yao's first carry on the night, nets six yards, brings up a second and four. Again, Cooper Yao just continues to impress. Yeah, will set up near wing. Try to get the Falcons to jump. They don't. The line switches. Goes heavy left. The give is Kozak. Kozak has some room and has the first down. About eight yards on that carry. 
And, and uh, not sure if he's quite 100% yet, Chris. That would be one of those where once he had that corner, if, he's, if he is 100%, that was probably six points. Completely agree, Roland. And they're just going to let the quarter wind down here and reach the zeros. And after one, West on top, 7 nothing. You're watching Muskie football on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Have you heard the little things can make the biggest difference? Every day, big and littles are connecting in our community. Their time together can look a little different, but the goals and outcomes are the same. The littles are building confidence, forming better relationships, a sense of belonging, and achieving big goals. But there are more kids just like me who are still waiting. Will you join us in making more matches possible? Support Big Brothers, Big Sisters. At Hustler Turf, quality matters, especially when it comes to the driving experience. Let's take a closer look. Our legendary smooth track steering provides buttery smooth turns, making maneuvering around obstacles a breeze. Unlike the jerky feel of other options, our smooth track steering is so effortless, anyone can make short work of the lawn. Hustler Turf, mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Rivo, the plumbing experts for Muscatine and surrounding areas, has moved. Our new location. Roland Glemba and Chris Anderson back here starting the uh, second quarter tonight. Congratulations to the, the younger Muskies winning the prelim game this evening. It was 36 to 8, I believe. One side of the fair. Good way to start off homecoming Friday. Here's the give, Ty up the middle. Ty spins out of a tackle, he's loose inside the 30. And we got an injured Muskie in the backfield. That's a first down. A gain of about 16 for Kozad. That brings him up to 43 yards unofficially on the night. And, uh, and yet again, a new career rushing record. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we just came out of a break, so let's just keep it here as the uh, trainers are on the field uh, attending to the uh, the injured, I believe, lineman. We'll, we'll get you his name as soon as we can. But uh, this is a big drive right here. This is still early in the ball game. But you, you move the ball, you got that first down, and uh, now the offense is starting to get some rhythm, but you got to get points out of this. Absolutely, Roland. There's no way that playing from behind is good for this team. They are not built to come back, that is for sure. And it, it's just a matter of trying to regain that confidence that you had last week. And put some points as soon as they get points on the board that this team seems to build they they really the defense builds on what the offense does the offense builds on the defense does they really are two units that are intertwined and really kind of feed off of each other i mean every team does but this team seems to take it to another level once the momentum starts to roll it really hits on both sides of the ball so Ty Kozad came up with a nice run there, 16 yards. It was a, a little spin move. That was nice to see. And uh, the injured lineman is on his feet, but being uh, helped off the field there. I want to make sure we get the number right before. Is that 58 or 50? 58. All right, so that is Caden Gray being helped off the field, favoring his left leg. We'll wish the best for him as the training staff will uh, work on him on the sidelines, and we're back to action. Clock ticking down now. First minute of the second quarter. Curtis under center. Turns, gives, and that play going nowhere. 
Ty Kozad met as soon as he got the ball, and that's a loss of two. This might be where you want to do that little counter to Yao. That reverse to Yao that scored a couple of times last week. Just I believe wasn't that what they scored with in Iowa City West too? I believe they were. Not sure if it was the reverse, but it was yeah, Yao. It was it was definitely a counter of some sort. Yeah. Yao goes in motion and they'll give it up the middle. Kozad breaks free. Can he get the corner? Down to the 15, down to the 10. He does have the first down. <laughs> 19 yards for Ty Kozad and a first down for the Muskies. Well, that works too. <laughs> First down and goal. Yao and Kozad in the backfield. Curtis under center turns, gives to Yao. Kozad leading the way. Yao near the goal line reaches for the Did it, it popped out. Well, the it, ground caused the fumble. Right. They're going to mark him down at the one. Yao put that ball out there dangerously reaching for the goal line. Did pop out as it hit the ground. Ground cannot cause a fumble, of course. So second down and goal now from the one. We did see the quarterback sneak last week. Yeah, They, they did yeah, run yeah, that yep. finally. We'll see if they go yep. back to that here. You do have Kozad back there. Full house backfield. Yao and Brookhart also. The give is to Kozad. Kozad, that's a touchdown. Muskies are on the board. Jackson Othmer now on to uh, try to tie this game up. Wearing those orange cleats. Snap is perfect, the kick is up, it's high and it is good. And with 9.59 left in quarter number two, the Muskies tie it up, seven apiece. We'll be right back. At 1109 Grandview Avenue offers spacious parking and a large open showroom. Employing experienced plumbers and carpenters, we specialize in remodeling entire bathrooms and kitchens. Imagine the possibilities. Stylish new faucets, sinks, shower units, bathtubs, and more, along with tankless water heaters and gas fireplaces. We also provide complete residential and commercial plumbing services. Rivo Incorporated. Call us for your next remodel. Did we mention quality matters? Welcome to our cut quality center. Let's take a closer look. Our mowers provide superior laser precision cut quality for a perfectly manicured lawn. Let's break this down in science terms. This grass is cut good. This grass is cut not as good. Hustler Turf. Mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Welcome to the future. Imagined by visionaries, championed by leaders, and focused on results. Made real through hard work and a determination to build. Back here in Muscatine, Roland Glenbine and Chris Sanderson. Muskies have tied this one up. We're in the second quarter already. Meanwhile, over at Brady Street Stadium, they haven't started yet. Yeah, the, the preliminary game there was 42 to 41. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yep. that makes for a long night. North beat Central 42-41, and they haven't started the varsity game yet. Here's Othmer's kick. That's deep into the end zone. Touchback City, and the Falcons will start off deep in their own territory. You know, Othmer has proven to be a very reliable, consistent advantage. That is a huge weapon. If you can get the other team to start on the 20. And not take a chance at something coming back, it's yep. amazing. Mm -hmm. 
But the defense held steady last time out. West scored in their first possession. Had to punt and actually were stopped on fourth down in their second possession. Here comes number three, and they run it right up the middle with Tate, and he has a first down, a big gain of about 13 yards. How about a baseball score, Chris? Milwaukee wow. Brewers are winning 16 to nothing tonight over the Marlins. Wow. They scored 12 runs in the second inning. Marlins, of course, fighting for a playoff spot with the uh, the Cubs and Reds, among others, trying to get that last wild card spot with, a seat, oh, with one week to go in the season. Here's the pass, and the ball's deflected. It's loose, and it falls to the. Oh, it was caught? Well, he somehow caught the deflection on that one. That was a crazy play on the far sidelines. There's one of your 50 50 balls right there. Could have uh, gone either way. West makes the catch. Brings up a second down in three. <laughs> Speaking of baseball, can't wait for uh, are the band going to be playing tonight during the homecoming. I, are they doing the baseball thing again? It is not the baseball thing. It's uh, pop music rendition. All right, is what I'm being told. Okay. We'll, we'll have to wait till later in the year to see if they fix yes. the scoreboard situation. I, I did actually talk with Jeff Hyde about that after the game. And he's actually open to the idea of getting some sort of attachment that they can put on the scoreboard to, to finish off that per, that performance. We're there to help. That's all. I mean, so I told him. I told him. And I know a guy. I know a guy. We're there to help. Makes all the difference. Props. All right. So that's a first down for West. They, uh, Move the sticks a couple of times on this drive, already out to the 43. And that's going to be a little illegal motion on the Falcons. I think they had two guys moving at once right there, and that will push them back five yards. I don't believe the Muskies have a penalty yet tonight. Don't tell anybody that. We just saw, I mean, last week, as great as that game was last week, there were a lot of uh, a lot of unsportsmanlike penalties both was, ways. And, and actually, the last two games for the Muskies have had more than you would probably like to see on the unsportsmanlikes. So, so far, so good on that. And that was a little wide right on the pass. So thir or yeah, third down correct and long upcoming. Well, no. Nope. Second down long. Okay. Down. We'll change it. That's right. The penalty. Penalty kept it down. So second down and 15. Nonetheless, still an opportunity for this defense. Do a little ball hawk in here. See if you can get a, an interception on this. I'd love to see Darnell come across the – come from, like, center field somewhere and just pick one and go. A little option play. Long pitch. The ball's loose. Recovered, but that's a huge loss on that play. That's spacing right there. The spacing on that option, it, you can tell West doesn't run that play a lot. They did not look comfortable on that at all. You got to be a little closer to your quarterback. That was a long way to that pitch was, that ball. That was a long way. And it didn't look like they had much of the line coming with them. So I think they were expecting to be a little more open field, a little closer, and be able to just turn up and run up field. And that doesn't necessarily mean that's the back's fault. I feel like the quarterback, Matson kind of stopped a little prematurely. And here's the, the pass on third down. They got a long way to go after the catch and not going to get it. So a punting time for the Falcons. And uh, should be some pretty good field position here once this punt's said and done. Lopez will go back. Standing around, well, he's going to go back around the 35 now. They only average about 26 yards this season thus far on their punts. You know, I'm surprised Coach Hawkins hasn't pulled in a Belichick move from the Patriots and have somebody running 
full speed down the line and trying to time it and jump the snap and get back there for a block. That was, you're going to see a lot of teams do that. That was going to be a risk reward genius thing. Genius right there. And you get that head start, and boy, that was an easy block, wasn't it? Uh, it, it was, but I'm just. How many times are they going to go on to, and you're screwed? No, they'll adjust, of course, but it's something that we're going to see again for sure. Or, you know, the other thing that brings in is faking it. You know, you come sprinting down the line like that, like you're going to go to block, get somebody to jump. So first down, Muskies. Trying to get their first lead of the night. Back to throw, Curtis. Curtis lets it fly. He's got a man out there. It's caught there by Brookhart. And a big gain by the Muskies through the air. Twenty-six yards from Curtis to Brookhart. You know, speaking of Mr. Brookhart, I actually got to sit down. I mentioned last week I got to sit, got to sit down with them last Friday, and we're going to have uh, a portion of that interview during halftime, and then we'll release the full interview tomorrow. Ooh, a little sneak peek. I like it. Here's the give, Kozad. Kozad up the middle. Some uh, tough running there. And we'll pick up about three yards on that carry. Maybe two. See where they spot it. Thompson comes in with the play call. It will be second and seven. We'll give. Goes at three yards on that carry. He's up to 64 on the night. We're down to five minutes left in the second quarter. Thompson split near bottom of the screen. Full house backfield. Curtis takes, turns, gives to Kozak. Kozak up the middle. Kozak's free to the 20, to the 10. Pay dirt, Ty Kozad. And he still didn't look full speed. It, it still looked maybe 90 percent. I'm not complaining. No. Not complaining. I'm just saying I still think there's another gear there because his 90 percent is better than 95 percent of the backs in this state. That well. just shows you how special that young man is. 39-yard touchdown run puts him over 100 yards on the night and puts the Muskies more importantly on top in this ball game. Lineman a little late to get on the field for the extra point. Still plenty of time on the play clock. Speaking of running in different gears, it was pretty fun to watch some of the guys running around with the girls during Powder Puff in their Crocs in sport mode and just, like, trying to cut back and forth and up and down and, and somehow not completely falling out of their Crocs. Oathmer's kick is good, and the Muskies are on top, 14-7. We'll be right back. When water service lines get damaged, customers often call us first. Remember, MPW is responsible for the water main. The water service line from the main to your home belongs to you. Damage is usually unexpected, and repairs can cost thousands. So don't wait until a problem occurs. Be prepared. Check your homeowner's policy and see if it's covered. If not, third-party protection plans are available for water and sewer. MPW also offers the utility loan program with 0% interest, and that may help. Learn more at mpw.org. Well, back here on homecoming, the Muskies fell down 7 nothing, but has since scored the next 14 points. And this crowd a little more lively now as they look on. Still 4.44 to go in this second quarter. Fast-moving ball game tonight. We get a win and a fast-moving game. That is a, that it's is a, a win -win. perfect script right there. But the only thing that can make it better is a little Sal Vitale's. <laughs> And there is another. That one's out of the end zone. He kicked <laughs> it all the way through. <laughs> that is just ridiculous. That is ridiculous. Well, that young man will be uh, kicking on Saturdays for sure. So we talked about the, the defense and the offense kind of picking each other up. Now the... Defense has their turn to keep this momentum going right now. 
West has a four receiver set on his first down and 10 from the 20. Madsen throws out in the flat, has meter, meter. Same. Made the first man miss, but uh, help was quickly there and Thompson brings him down. Call it second and six, three receiver set. Back to throw, quick passes, deflected in the air and falls harmlessly to the ground. Way to get the paws up at the line of scrimmage, D-line deflecting that up. Unfortunately, no defenders lurking in that uh, immediate area of the ball landed. So third down and six upcoming now for West. And again, a great chance to get off the field here, three and out. Quick throw, the ball deflected again, and that brings up a fourth down, and this D-line is doing a job right now. Camden Furness deflects it at the line of scrimmage, and out comes the punting unit. Here's the punt, fair catch, call for it. short punt, got to get away from it. And the ball rolls dead inside of West Territory all the way down to the 45 yard line. Still 347 on the clock, Muskies have all three of their timeouts, not sure they're gonna need it here. But just in case, it's a great chance to maybe run a little clock, try to score with about 30, 20 seconds left, something like that, going 21-7 at halftime or just give it the tie and let them score from 45. I mean, either way, but you know. Or, or Cooper could do it, or I mean. You're right, Cooper has done it, and he's back there in the backfield, full house. Brokart, Kozad, Yao, our favorite law firm. This time it's Kozad. Kozad running hard down inside the 40. That's a pickup of seven. Brookhart had an amazing fake back there. I don't know if you saw that acting. Uh, he was either completely falling on his rear end or it was a tremendous fake. Brookhart sets up on the wing this time to give to Kozak. Kozak up the gut, makes a man miss. Oh, he just broke out of a tackle all the way down to the 25 yard line. And we're starting to see signs of Ty coming back to full strength. It's just every run seems to be a little bit more of what we remember. That one down to the 25-yard line. I wonder if that's what the crop circle out in the field behind the football field is. Explain yourself. Fumble, Kozad. Just jumps on it. I actually don't think I will, sir. <laughs> Corn. We're talking cr crop circles or mysteries. Yes. <laughs> no, they, they actually started working on the girls' softball diamond mm -hmm. behind the stadium. They did, they did. And so there is a big open dirt area and a big circle of dirt. I thought you were telling me Tycho's adds an alien or something. I didn't know where you were going with any of this. Nobody ever does. Oh, I man. don't know. Here's the give to Ty. Ty gets down to the 20-yard line, gain of five yards, and a third down and five as the clock dips under the two-minute mark. You know, it was just last week we were saying, you know, looks like they should probably get started on that softball diamond if they want to get everything done well, before the winter and be ready for spring. I guess they listened to us. They, they did. That's, that is the strong MHS athletic department on it. 
Here's the give. Go, no, fake the Cozad. Rolls out, option play. Hit hard. <laughs> Curtis bounces off of that, and I think he's got a first down. Gage Curtis just bounced off the tackle, spun right into a first down. Well, that's not really how you draw that up, but it worked. And again, that clock is ticking down. This is one of those, this is what you want. Just, you're not in a hurry up right now. Still 113, still got all three of your timeouts and the give is to Kozad. Kozad gets hit at the 10, he's still on his feet to the five. Near a first down, we'll call it a nine yard carry as we hit the one minute mark. Still got 30 seconds on the play clock, but Muscatine right up to the line of scrimmage. At this point, just get the points. Here's Ty, Ty inside the five into the end zone, dives for six more. Kozad dives into the end zone. And uh, he is down on the sidelines. That is problematic right now. We're going to keep our eye on that as the trainers come over. Seems to be holding his head right now. Here's the kick by Othmer. Splits the uprights. 39 seconds to go in this first half. It's now 21 to seven, and uh, we're close to halftime. Let's just keep it here on this one, Chris, as Ty is now on his feet and walking towards the bench. Not quite sure what happened. Maybe he just got kind of dinged a little bit. Nothing to do with the hamstring, that's for sure. You, you hope it wasn't a hit to the head or anything concussion-wise. As he's back on his feet and, and walking towards uh, the offensive bench. Seems to be okay, but we will definitely keep an eye on that as this game progresses. 21 straight points by the Muskies. As we have just 39 seconds left in this first half. Well, that's about what we said we wanted, right? And run that clock down. I, I think I exactly said run that clock down to 30, 20 seconds left and score a touchdown. It's, it's not just them building softball fields listening to us. The football team's doing what we ask as well. So that's, that's not bad. Kickoff, <laughs> no shocker, into the end zone. Yet another touchback. And we'll see how aggressive that uh, West Falcons want to be here with just 39 seconds to go. They do have all three of their timeouts, but they're 80 yards away from the end zone and they don't have the strongest kicking game as well. But trailing 21 to seven, West will get the ball to start the second half. Muskie started off on offense tonight and now we have a timeout called by the Muscatine uh, coaching staff as they had a look at something and once again, we always say you can't take your timeouts to high B. You got to spend them in uh, the half that they're given to you. And Coach Hawkins taking one right here. Well, halftime show coming up. A little homecoming halftime might be a little bit longer. Of course, we, uh, as we mentioned, have that interview with the Brookharts. You want to stay tuned and listen to that. All, all three of them. Kind of getting together and uh, having some fun. We'll get a little snippet of that during the halftime show. Checking on some other scores around the area as well. Some bigger games going on tonight that we'll check in on. All coming up here during the break. Goes at up to 150 yards now unofficially on the night. Two touchdowns.
Back to throw. Matson lets it go. He has his man over the middle. And there's a big chunk of about 20 yards on first down. They'll stop the clock to move the chains at 33 seconds. Quickly up to the line is West. That was nicely done. Now we have a stoppage, and West is going to call a timeout. Well, the offense did a great job getting up to the line. Coach Nunn is going to use one of his timeouts nonetheless with just 30 seconds to go. That's what you, you can't have happen on offense. You don't mind giving up about uh, five, ten-yard plays right now, but those big chunk plays, that's what gives that other team life right now. You want to keep them off the scoreboard, keep it at 21-7 to seven at uh, worst going to halftime right now. They're going to reset the clock a little bit. So the officiating crew is communicating with our friends next door in the scoring table and they have it up to 35. They put four and a half more seconds on the clock. West down to two timeouts. Now both teams at two timeouts. Three receivers set towards the top. The throw is out in the flat towards the top. It's caught and brought down and quickly a timeout called right there. That's what you want. You, it's all right if they catch the ball. You keep it under 10 yards, you force them to use their timeouts right now. And keep them in the center of the field. So 26, well, 26.9 seconds left, just one timeout. And again, not uh, really a kicking game to talk of, although they did have a 40-yard field goal earlier in the year. So if you're looking at a 40-yard field goal, you got to get down to about the 23-yard line. Among those games tonight, Cedar Rapids Jefferson, they're 4-0. They're, there's only four teams in Class uh, 5A that are still undefeated, and Jefferson is one of them, and they play winless Cedar Rapids, Washington tonight. So Jefferson it's looking pretty good. Probably going to be 5-0. and oh. You know, it was surprising when we were talking about that game early in the season. You know, they lost, was it 26 in a row? Yeah. And I, Don't let the did, Jefferson people hear you say that, though. No, I know. Well, no, <laughs> but I mean, it's, I, yeah. you know, when you're doing the research, the, these are the numbers, right? Yeah. And they did not play like a team that had lost 26 in a row at all. Well, we got a timeout here called by Coach Hawkins. We did have a flag thrown, but I think the timeout came before the flag. Not sure what that flag was going to be, but it uh, doesn't matter because it never happened. No, and, and now they've won four in a row and probably going to be five if uh, they beat their intra-city rivals tonight over at Kingston Stadium. And, and you're probably going to the playoffs at that point. Their schedule does get tougher towards the end of the year, but five wins is five wins. That's the way to do it. Get them all right at the beginning of the season. Yeah. Call it good. So the Muskies down to one timeout now left. Yeah, the, after tonight, the Jefferson Jayhawks have Iowa City West, Cedar Rapids Prairie, Davenport Central, and uh, Iowa City Liberty left on the schedule. So a five receiver set, empty backfield. Matson back to throw, throwing deep across the middle, has his man, same play, same result, down to the 32 yard line. This one for about 27 yards, two plays and uh, 40, about 48 yards. And West will burn their final time out with 21 seconds left. And if they don't gain another yard, you're looking at a 49-yard field goal from here. I don't know that I like the sound of that. I feel like if I'm them, 
No, they need more. And if you look at the flag right now, there is a little bit of a breeze out there, and it will be into their face, it looks like. Going a little bit uh, top to bottom of your screen, but uh, it's definitely also going to be in their face a bit. So they're going to need at least another 15 yards here to be able to kick a field goal. Successfully, anyway. Bettendorf Bulldogs, one of those undefeated teams as well. Muskies don't have to play them this year unless they play them in the postseason. It means our win streak with them will carry on another year. And we don't play them next year either because it's a mirror schedule, so. Here we go, big play. Defense needs to do something. Looking deep down into the corner. Ball is thrown oh. short and incomplete. No flags on the field, and the clock is down to 15 seconds left. Well, if you can get a sack right now, that will end the half. They'll send trips down to the bottom of your screen. Looks like the man moved a little early. No flag, however. They're going to go deep in that corner again. The man got by the oh. defense, and Meter's going to score the touchdown. It looked like Meter almost got a head start on that play. No flag thrown. And uh, a little mistake in the coverage right there. You don't let the man get by you. Just run to the goal line. Well, that's a big turn of events right there as West gaining some momentum back going into halftime. Just 10 seconds left. Extra point is up, and it does sneak in. And it's now 21 to 14, and that's a whole lot different than 21 to 7 for sure. Again, they'll get the ball to start the second half as well. They, they found the, the soft spot in that zone, hit those two right up the middle for 21 and 28 yards, and then went deep down the sideline, came up short the first time, but the second time, passes right on the money. And West has life again. Well, this is where, if you, if you really want to get greedy, and we do, we like to be greedy. I was actually just thinking that. Darnell, Darnell all the way to the house right now. He's due. I mean, it, it, we've come close so many times this year. Him or, or Cooper, either one. Both of those guys have had some close calls. We'll see if they uh, squib kick this or if they hang it up because he does not have the leg to get to the end zone. It is going to be a squib kick, one bounce, two bounces. Thompson has it. Thompson tries to get by that first line, and he's still on his feet somehow and will probably will finally be brought down with the 2.2. Wrangled to the ground at the 30-yard line. Well, don't expect Coach Hawkins to get too crazy here, but uh, why not hand it off to Ty? He's your home run hitter and see if See if he can break one, or, or maybe this is where you run that reverse to Cooper that we haven't seen yet tonight, which has scored a couple of touchdowns last week. Cooper in motion. They were going to give it instead. Five-yard penalty. Well, the officials didn't miss that one. They may have missed one on West, but they didn't miss that one, and it'll push it back five more yards. As we should, the clock should say two seconds. It says one. I don't know if it makes a difference right now.
One final play from the 25. Goes ahead in the backfield. Curtis under center. The officials are looking at the clock, trying to get 2.2 seconds back up there. And yeah, they'll settle for 2.0. Here we go. Yao in motion, the give to Ty. Ty breaks free, but can't Not get quite. by the second line of the, the defense. He will add 15 more yards to his total, though, and take us to halftime. It's been a good game. Muskies are on top, 21-14. Uh, halftime show coming up, including that uh, interview with the Brookhart boys. Yep, and we'll actually also have an introduction of the homecoming court in just a couple of minutes. physical therapy. Feel better, move forward. We are looking for a zero turn lawnmower. At Hustler Turf, quality matters. Can I test drive that one? In the store? <laughs> Even in the buying experience, we know you want to buy from someone who knows what they're talking about. We're looking for a zero turn mower. Like Great. this guy. Uh, first thing you need to know is what's the size of your property? Uh, are there any obstacles? Head to your local Hustler dealer and talk to a lawnmower expert. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Musky Sports are brought to you by Muscatine Power and Water, Muscatine Lawn and Power, River of Florida. First up we have Nathan Bowicamp, the son of John and Michelle Bowicamp, defeating escorted by his mother, Michelle. <laughs> Player Zach, escorted by his parents Chad and Becky Zach. Grace Lurch, escorted by her parents Michael and Kelly Zurich. Ty Kozad, the son of Amber and Brad, being escorted by his parents this evening. And Bodie being escorted by her parents Craig and Susan Bodie. Ronnie Romo is being escorted by his parents. Ali Hernandez, Mario Costa, Ayer Romo, and Amanda Romo. Gabby Steele being escorted by her parents, Mike and Nicole Steele. Next up, we have our homecoming king, Anthony Ash. Being escorted by his mother, Sammy Ash, and sister, Malia Ash. And our homecoming queen, Fiona Glenn. Being escorted by your parents, John and Kelsey Glenn. <laughs> Once again, let's hear it for our 2023 Homecoming Court. Thank you. 
Things look great. 21 straight points by Muscatine. Ty Coase had a couple of touchdowns, but boy, that uh, last drive by Davenport West going 80 yards on, uh, I think, four plays to score a touchdown to make this a 21-14 game at halftime kind of takes some air out of the uh, sails. It, it surely does, especially when they're going to be getting the ball back. And, you know, you could be looking at a tie bowl game within the next possession. So you've got to hope at this point that the Muskies are recouping, recovering, and refocusing because it's, you know, that that last touchdown was just a little bit of a slipping coverage. They let the guy get behind him, mental mistake, and away you go. It's the old prevent defense, right? It, it, you throw it out there and it, and it never works, it seems like. You want to, you know, and I'm talking about watching NFL even. It's like... Boy, teams move that ball way too easily and too fast. And, and, you know, if you look at the half as a whole, though, you got to feel pretty good about the way the defense played. Oh, absolutely. And I think, you know, to your point on the pre-man defense, I, I agree. I've never seen it really, really work, right? Like, you've had the same thing work. Now, obviously, when they change and they're trying to go deep down the field, of course, you've got to put the defense of some function. But you also can't lose the aggressiveness or whatever it was that got you there at the same point. You can't let the receiver get behind you, and that's what happened. It's a mistake. It cost us seven points, but uh, hopefully that uh, won't make a difference down the end. As uh, the offense is, is moving the ball, and you got to like how that looks, so... So far, uh, halfway through this very big ball game, we talked about what this means to a possible postseason run. Got to get this win, and uh, we are halfway to that thus far, up 21-14 at the break. And, uh, uh, you know, we talked about Jefferson a lot. Cedar Rapids, Washington is, is winning over Jefferson now, 14 0. What? Cedar Rapids, Washington, winless Washington, 14. Undefeated Jefferson, 0 uh, in the second quarter. Uh, you just never know. That's, uh, that's a rivalry. That's why you play the games. Those are city rivals, and yep. Still a lot of time to go with that, but yeah, you, you never know. The band's about to play the Jackson Five, and I know we can't listen. Yeah, uh, so folks, and I do hope that uh, you know. Please remember, we try to show you and let you listen to as much of the band as we can without getting put in jail by the YouTube and Facebook police for playing copyrighted music. So yes, we do talk over the um, the band playing. Uh, it's not a, a disrespect thing at all. It's a us trying to find creative ways to play the system. And so far it works pretty well. Yeah, and uh, the band is a little different routine in that, right? And we'll bring the baseball theme back here a little later in the year, but why not do a little Miley Cyrus? My daughter's ears perked up. And so now we go a little old school. Jackson 5. Yeah. Do, do we know what's coming after the Jackson 5? That's the question. I, I, what's the theme? There's so many questions. Is there an official theme to tonight? Just pop music in general? Pop music well, in it's got to be Taylor Swift, though. otherwise my daughter won't be very mad. Well, you know what? We do have a hotline to the head band maestro himself. We could... Send Mr. Hyde our complaints directly. We need some T, <laughs> T Swift for sure. <laughs> he, you know, uh, and again, folks, for as much as it may sound like I uh, give Mr. Hyde a hard time, he's a tremendous guy. I 
thoroughly enjoy all the stuff that we do. Another score worth noting at halftime, Cedar Falls 10, Linmar 6, and uh, Linmar is our opponent next week as we take the road trip up to Marion. That might be a winnable game. We'll, we'll, we'll talk more about that next week, obviously, or maybe later tonight. But, but uh, Linmar has lost one of their star players. Their four or five star tight end, uh, Roscoff, is out with an ACL injury. Injury. And ever since then, they've kind of fallen down on offense. So not as strong as they look to start the year right now. So while it's not T-Swift coming, it is Megan Trainer. Uh, not the same. Sorry, Megan Trainer fans. Uh, you know, it's got to be T-Swift or maybe even Olivia Rodrigo at this point. You know. I <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I understood about two of those things you just Do said. Do a leap on, well, I have a nine-year-old daughter, so I'm very versed in the pop music scene <laughs> right now. Should, should we just let her hop on and comment on <laughs> the performances? Are, are you a fan of the Megan Trainer? I got a, yeah. I got a shrug. Well, and we do have a high school senior here as well. Are, are you a fan of the Megan Trainer? Okay, of course. Hated on Megan. No, say it. And with that, we will now uh, take a quick cut to that interview that I got to do with the first yeah. boys. But, you know, and I'll tell you this is a quick lead in for this. Um, obviously, for those of you that may not know, uh, the Burkhardt boys are triplets. There are twins. Two identical. Two identical, yep. And uh, great kids. Uh, unfortunately, Lincoln got hurt uh, on the very first, first play. First offensive play. First offensive play. And so... Um, we were we were all sitting down and talking about that and just kind of like what it's like for them in a unique situation of being, you know, triplets all playing together, um, what they've played together, what they haven't. And uh, while this isn't the whole interview, uh, it is some of the more fun fun moments that we had. Um, and you will absolutely enjoy these games. Talking with your mom, um, you know, I, I'm sure she's told this story a bunch, but, you know, when she found out it was triplets, she cried, mm -hmm. probably a little scared, right? Um, I know I would be. Wonder, like, what it was like for your parents. <laughs> like, do you, well, what are you grinning about? I, I feel I would hate it. I'd like, they have two older sisters, but they're still not that much older than us. So they had like four kids, like five kids under the age of like four, and they told us that it like sucked for a while, but they loved it. Okay, so one of the other things that came up from several people was uh, Huey, Dewey, and Louie. <laughs> okay, <laughs> which one's which? I think we think, I think we, 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 we've talked about this before. I think we said Lincoln was Louie. <clears throat> one was, is it Huey? I think he was Huey. Was, How do you guys not know this? I don't know. We, 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 were, we were more the Alvin and Chickmunks, yeah. you know? Oh. Those were our colors, <clears throat> red, green, and blue. Right, okay, so... Actually, yeah, that is... Well, red, green, and blue. Isn't that Huey, Dewey, and Louie, too? I almost oh, can't remember. I, we didn't watch much Huey, Dewey, and Louie. More chip. Okay, well, our, we can roll with Chipmunks. That works. Okay, so then... Wait, okay, so now, now this brings up a whole other thing. So, who's Alvin? You're not gonna argue with him. I mean, I can't. I mean, even as a kid, he even had this Alvin the Chipmunk, you know, a little A hoodie. We all had, we all had our little sweatshirts. Wait, seriously? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then who's Simon and Theodore? I was Theodore. I was unfortunately. How, how'd you like that? I, I was a huge fan, but I mean, it was my color, my designated color as a kid. So I mean, I had to go with it. <laughs> okay, so designated color thing. I, I'll be honest, it makes sense, right? When did you guys really start kind of like? growing because I'm assuming at some point you're like hey I don't want to be Theodore anymore like I mean when did you guys like stop dressing like oh, that do you remember it was a long time after like the baby late middle school like early middle school sometime during then we were like doing that all through elementary school but 
we really didn't like because now we don't care about colors right we just started dressing how we like to and how we got a bunch of school merch so it makes it easy just to dress to school this may have been a little more difficult because you were in colors but did you like did you two ever try and like pull the classic parent trap thing oh uh, we tried it at our band class once and he got yelled at and so he yeah, wanted, got, he wanted to switch back i got a little scared because the band teacher started yelling at me thinking i was him i didn't want to get him in trouble so i was like i gotta get out of here so we, so we just switched back like mid class like we were both in band we just switched okay. pods and he played trombone i played saxophone I, I so I just play. Okay, no offense guys, but if there's a time to try and pull the switch, it doesn't seem like while you're playing instruments is like the time to do that. <laughs> I mean, it was like I would have probably gone in like homeroom, you know, like yeah, musky time, something have. like that. That maybe makes a little more sense. I had no idea how to play the trombone. It was weird. Yeah, yeah that's that. So you're obviously the smart one, right? Yeah. <laughs> do you guys... Obviously, you're not in red, green, and blue anymore, but do you guys share clothes? Do you all have your own clothes? Like, is that like a hard line? Feels like that might be a hard line, right? Uh, no, we kind of share our clothes for the most part. Because, but then there's like some clothes that are like, that's definitely mine. You don't wear it. It's kind of weird, but it's like an unspoken rule. It's like Lincoln's lucky underwear. Yeah, but I have a pair of lucky underwear where to games. So that's, that's my underwear. Okay. It, actually, it's funny. The subject of luck, law of luck came up with your mom. And supposedly, one of you is significantly more lucky, both good and bad, than the others. Yeah. Who's, who's that, that? That would be me. Lincoln. Oh, that would be the one who, on the first play of his offensive senior season, went down, right? Yeah. yeah. That's the bad luck side, right? Yes. So, so let's talk about that for a second. They're on the play with him, so I just walked up next to him, kneeled to him, and I was just trying to comfort him. As, but he, he knew that... He broke his ankle, so it was just really sad to be there. I mean, I kind of knew, like, I looked back and I saw him on the ground, and I was, like, worried, but, like, I wanted to give him his space because, you know, last thing I want is, like, a bunch of people surrounding me and stuff when I'm injured, so. All right, so here's the tough question. I mean, obviously, it was hardest for you, I would think. Mm -hmm. What was it like? Senior? Did you just, like, see your senior season flash in front of you, or how did it? It, it kind of did. I I heard it break, and I kind of knew, like, in the back of my head, I was like, that was probably the last snap I'll play senior season. And when when Ma came over to me, I was just was yelling at him, it's broke, and I'm done. And I was, like, really upset. I can't imagine what that would be like. I mean, you guys have put so much effort into it. I mean, how do you guys, I mean, is there anything you feel like you can do to help? Or, like, what does it feel like to... To see him go through this, uh, I don't know. It just sucks knowing that you can't do anything, but you want to so bad. Yeah, I, and I think that goes for the entire community. I mean, like, especially you know, you went down. It was it was the first play of offense, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And then Ty goes down. Mm -hmm. You know, what ten minutes later? Or right so. after it. Yeah, I mean, it was it, it was a couple plays mm -hmm. and. You know, we were, I remember we were in the booth and we were just like, I, honestly, the stuff we were saying, I, I can't repeat. Let's go, let's do something funny. Haley had a couple for me. The second one was, who's the original triplet? That's me. No, technically it's me. No, it's me. Yes. We also, Wait. so we've had a conversation about <laughs> we this, We have had a right? conversation about I was supposed this. to be the first one, but like, I guess I got, so we had a C-section. I was being the first one to play. I guess I got stuck or something. Then... Uh, pulled me out, so they pulled Lincoln out first, and then me. I'm the, I was the first. Boy. But we've also had a conversation where you even agreed that I was the no, original. I, I yes, didn't you understand did. Understand what the question was? He caught me like saying the wrong answer. Now he thinks it's all he's the original. I was the one born first. That's all I'm saying. So well, do the math. Well, right, but okay. So, but let's go back. Let's 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 see how the biology on this works, right? So, like, technically, I mean, you guys split from the same one, right? Mm -hmm. So, really, it would have been a race between you two and him. I mean, he very well could be the original triplet, right? That's true, but, like... <laughs> but what? No, yeah, okay, let's hear it. I don't know, like... He would be the original triplet, but if it's the original triplet out of me and him, I'm definitely I'm the original not. triplet. Well, what, wouldn't that be the original twin? I would be the original twin. You're he would technically the be the original triplet, yeah. <laughs> you don't care, do you? 
Wow. <laughs> You're sitting there like, I have no idea why they're arguing about yeah. this. Musky Sports are brought to you by Muscatine Power and Water, Muscatine Lawn and Power, Rivo Plumbing and Heating, Unity Point Health, Trinity Muscatine, Bear of Muscatine, Muscatine Church of Christ, H&J Cards, It Takes a Village Animal Rescue and Resources, Impact Fitness and Nutrition, Zach Fry at the Lee Agency, Big Brothers Big Sisters of Muscatine, Muscatine Symphony Orchestra, Josiah Anderson at Real Estate Resource Associates, Star Collectibles, Harper Cycling and Fitness, Muscatine Charities, and a special shout out to Mississippi Pearl Photography for all those great pictures of your Muscatine Muskies. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. At Hustler Turf, quality matters, especially in the strength and durability of our mowers. So you know your Hustler will stand the test of time. We think the difference is obvious. With our welded fabricated steel deck, high strength 11 gauge one piece frame, and the precision control of our smooth track steering, anyone can mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Rivo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing, a family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week, Rivo Incorporated, skill, knowledge, and tools to solve the messiest problems. Have you heard the littlest things can make the biggest difference? Every day, bigs and littles are connecting in our community. So it's time together can look a little different, but the goals and outcomes are the same. Littles are building confidence, forming better relationships, a sense of belonging, and achieving big goals. But there are more kids just like me who are still waiting. Will you join us in making more matches possible? Support big brothers, big sisters. At Hustler Turf. Roland Glenbine and Chris Anderson back here about to start the second half of homecoming. Muskies lead 21 to 14. West will get the ball to start the third quarter. And uh, we do have a developing situation we're keeping our eye on right now. Uh, not quite sure on the status of Ty Kozad in the second half. You recall he scored on that uh, diving touchdown late in the second quarter, came over to the sidelines and, and went to the ground, kind of holding his head. He has uh, come back out, did not warm up with the rest of the team to start the second half. He is in uniform, but is sitting on the bench right now, his helmet off, and uh, we'll keep an eye on it. But 
Right now, signs point to uh, his day might be done. I might be wrong, but uh, we'll keep our eye on that. Definitely not the normal tie coming out from halftime. No. Warming back up. And a lot of his teammates have come over and uh, kind of gave him a, a high fives. And it just kind of feels like uh, they're going to have to do it without him here in this second half. We'll see. Ty did have 165 yards rushing and two touchdowns in that first half. The uh, Muskies set to get us underway here. Jackson Othmer to boot this one away and more than likely into the end zone. Yes, uh, no, the ball bounces at the one. It will be returned. And uh, nonetheless, they'll get to the 20 yard line where it would have been had it been a touchback. So great job on the coverage unit. Not taking it for granted, getting down there and stopping things at the 20 yard line. So now it's on the defense to step up after allowing that late score in the first half. Allowing West to go 80 yards on just four plays. With not a whole lot of time on the clock. They'll we'll start off on the ground. There's Tate, the ball carrier. He'll pick up a couple of yards, not much more. We'll give him three. He'll bring up a second down and seven. Some other scores from around the area. Bettendorf leads Dubuque Hempstead 24 to seven at halftime. And Pleasant Valley leads Dubuque Senior 35 to 12 at the break. And now we have some movement. And that'd be a five yard penalty on West. It looked like they were maybe switching up the play or going in motion, but the right tackle was caught moving, and that's a big five yards, makes it second and 12 now. Well, if Ty is done for the day, it's really uh, on the defense now to get a stand, get this ball back, and try to build on that seven point lead. Try to get a little bit of a cushion right now. That's an out of the pistol. Bobbles the snap, gets it uh, to Tate, and Tate maybe back to the original line of scrimmage. Nothing more, and a third and long upcoming for West. This is a big play right now for this Muskie defense. Get off the field, three and out. Matson's come up big thus far through the air on a couple of plays. Senior quarterback out of the pistol has two receivers each direction. Back to throw, quick slant, catches made by nothing more than five yards, and the defense does their job. Out comes the punting unit. And the Muskies should get the ball back here with some pretty good field position. Aiden Lopez will uh, retreat back to receive this punt as he heads back to about his own 45 yard line. Well, back to the 40, might not need to go back that far, Aiden. Again, they only average about 26 yards per punt. Punter stands at the 10, and he'll let it go, and it is a sh shortish kick, and actually Lopez hadn't played just perfectly. Fair catches right there at about the 39 yard line. And out comes the offense, and out does come Ty Kozad. So that is great news right there. I worried for not. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, we had no update from the official booth, so. It just didn't look right, but it's it, great it definitely to see him back did not out look on the right. Field. First and 10, and Kozad in the backfield. And uh, there's that reverse play. Cooper Yowney's free to the 50, to the 40, 
One man to beat. Down to the 20. Down to the 10. And he's brought down to the five-yard line. Cooper Yao does it again. So close. So close. 56-yard run. First time we saw that play tonight, and just like last week, it works again. Maybe we should start calling it every play until they figure it out. We need to come up with a little name for that. Hmm. And we have a stop it down here as West wants to talk the about The Yautastic handoff? Yeah, we need to come up with something better than that. <laughs> I had like 15 seconds, come on. We'll, we'll, we'll think about it. We're, we're, we're open to taking suggestions on the old uh, Facebook page. Come up with something. We might even give you credit. Probably not, though. Yeah. But if it's really bad, we might say that, too. You'd be amazed the things that we'd say on this broadcast. The Yao Kapow. Uh, 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 just spitballing things during the timeout and uh, boy right now you punch this one in and get that 14 point spread back up and uh, things things feel a lot better things, yeah you breathe a lot easier it's amazing what a two possession ball game does to the frame of mind well, Lincoln Brookhart over on the sidelines on his scooter egging on the student section to make some noise right now he seems to be doing a good job of that. He was doing it at volleyball, center court all night. Yeah, and Cozad in the backfield. The give to Cozad. Ty bounces outside, still on his feet into the end zone. And that's number three on the night for Ty. And the Muskies extend their lead 27 to 14. I make it up for some uh, lost time tonight, scoring three times thus far. Othmer's kick is up and it is true. And with 9-11 left in this third quarter, the Muskies now lead 28 to 14. We'll be right back. Quality matters, especially when it comes to the driving experience. Let's take a closer look. Our legendary smooth track steering provides buttery smooth turns, making maneuvering around obstacles a breeze. Unlike the jerky feel of other options, our smooth track steering is so effortless, anyone can make short work of the lawn. Hustler Turf, mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Rivo, the plumbing experts for Muscatine and surrounding areas has moved. Our new location at 1109 Grandview Avenue offers spacious parking and a large open showroom. Employing experienced plumbers and carpenters, we specialize in remodeling entire bathrooms and kitchens. Imagine the possibilities. Stylish new faucets, sinks, shower units, bathtubs, and more, along with tankless water heaters and gas fireplaces. We also provide complete residential and commercial plumbing services. Rivo Incorporated, call us for your next remodel. Did we mention quality matters? Welcome to our cut policy. Let's take a closer look. Our mowers provide superior laser precision. Back here in Muscatine, Muskies now on top 28 14 early in this third quarter. After Cooper Yao ran for 56 yards, Ty Kozad punched it in from five. And the coverage unit there again to shut the door down at the 25 yard line. Jake Meyer leading on the tackle. First and 10 Falcons. Meyer gets credit on the tackle, and the Falcons have another long field ahead of them. Did you get down in front of the 
the camera, please. I'm sorry. Give to Tate. Tate tries to bounce outside, but nothing doing. Defense puts up the wall. Cooper Yao there on the tackle alongside uh, Nico Arceo. And out of the pistol, looks to throw quickly into the flat. Again, deflected, Cooper Yow! Third down and 10. Big play right here. Defense looking to come. Back to throw, throwing deep over the middle, and the ball's knocked away at the last second. Brookhart lays the wood, and out comes the punting unit again for West. Gavin Brookhart knocks the ball loose. And the Muskie defense holds three and out. Branson Heath back to punt this one away. Aiden Lopez awaiting at the 38 yard line. It's a short line drive, bounces and Lopez will let it roll and it keeps rolling and keeps rolling and keeps rolling all the way down to the 15 yard line. And that will help out that 26 yard average right there. Using the turf to his advantage was Heath. And now the Muskies starting all the way back at the 15 yard line. Seven fifty-nine to go, third quarter. You can punch one in here, and you can uh, start to breathe real easy. Easier anyway. Goes at Yao in the backfield. Curtis under center turns, gives to Kozad. Kozad dives forward. Not a whole lot there on that first down run. Give them one. Second down and nine upcoming for the Muskies. Thompson split off. Now the line will switch things up. Give Kozad right into the heart of the defense. Gets up to about the 21 yard line. We'll bring up a third and four. Kozad approaching his second straight 200 yard rushing game. It's still about 24 yards shy of that. Thompson splits off towards the top. Some movement up front, no flag, back to throw Curtis. Curtis lets it fly into the flat, Kozad has it, and they'll move the sticks, first down Muskies. Well, they ran that play last week, and it works again tonight. Getting Curtis to roll out. Finding his star running back in the flat, moves the sticks, first and 10, all the way out to the 28-yard line. 
And it keeps that clock moving, which we'd like to see as well with that 14 point lead. In same formation, they'll go a wing here. That's Brookhart off to the top. The to give to Kozad. Kozad punches through the first couple of tackles. Can't get through the third line and he'll have to settle for about six yards on that carry. Again, that's, that's perfect right there. Six yards on the ground on first down. Second and short, keep the clock moving. Hang on to the ball, do not turn it over. And keep moving the chains. You know. Gal goes back. Here's the give, Kozak. Kozak trying the near end. Got to turn the corner and he gets pushed out of bounds. Just shy of a first down. See where they mark it. And that is enough, just enough to move the sticks. So four yards on the carry. And yet another musky first down. Just taking the life out of West right now. Wishbone formation, first time we've seen that tonight. Here's the give to Yao, Yao. Into the heart of the defense, across the 40 yard line. Pick up of about three on first down. up in that wishbone formation. Kozad in the fullback position. The give is to Yao right up the middle and another first down for Muscatine. Boy, he was one ankle tackle away from breaking that one. Inside of West Territory, down to the 48 yard line. of time on that play clock just down to 15 seconds now then they'll come out in the wishbone Thompson split off to the top the turn the give to Brookhart Brookhart into the heart of the D and picks up maybe two on that first down carry just keeps the defense honest right now. This wishbone has uh, been effective the last couple of weeks. Now they'll go back to the, the wing. Brookhart, near side wing. They give to Kozad, Kozad bounces off one tackle, bounces off two, he's down the sidelines, needs to make one man miss. And he can't do that, but yet another first down for the Muskies. As they'll mark it all the way down to the 26 yard line. Well, 28 yard line, another 18 yards. And that puts Ty at over 200 yards tonight. and split off towards the top. Yao in motion, the give to Kozad. Kozad breaks through the ankle tackle and picks up a few yards on first down near the 25 yard line. And mark it at the 26 will give Ty two more yards. 
but we'll keep that clock moving. This has been a long, effective drive right now. Started all the way back at the 15 yard line. About 58 yards thus far and taking valuable time off this clock. Here's the turn, there it is to Yao up the middle and near another first down. Well again, that reverse has been unstoppable these last two weeks. And it is a Muscatine first down. Down to two minutes left in the third quarter. I just feel like this drive is just taking the life out of the West defense right now. Been rather impressive. Gotta finish it though. Kozad Yao in the backfield. Brookhart on the wing. The turn to give. Ty fumbles the ball, it's loose, and West has it. The Muskies creak that door back open. Fumbling the ball away at the 15 yard line. Well, that could have been the nail in the coffin. Instead, this game still hangs in the balance right now. West back out on the field, down just 14. On the positive side, it did take a lot of time off that clock as we are down to 1.32 left now in the third quarter. They're throwing it deep as a man, but just leads them too much. Intended for Meador, falls incomplete. Second and 10, Wilson trips off top of your screen. Meador splits off by himself towards the bottom. Matson in the pistol. Turns will throw out in the flat. It's picked, is it picked? Oh, it's dropped. Brookhard had a chance on that one and had nothing but grass between him and the end zone. Just couldn't control it. Incomplete. Oh, there was another chance right there. Third down and 10 now upcoming for West. Back to throw, Matson looking deep near side. It's up, Meador gets knocked away by Lopez. That was a good throw right there. Lopez did just enough to deflect the ball away and out comes the punting unit once again. Standing near the goal line is Heath. Needs a perfect snap right now. Instead it bounces and somehow, like a first baseman, scoops that one up and is able to get it away. And again, will use the bounce for a minute to his benefit, but uh, takes a musky hop at the end and comes to rest at the 42 yard line. Not a bad punt though from the goal line. But the Muskies, after fumbling it away, they'll get the ball back. Great job right there by the Muscatine defense to uh, pick up the offense after that fumble and force West off the field on a three and out. 114 left in this third quarter. The Muskies go back to work with the ball. Wishbone look. The turn, the give to Brookhart. Brookhart 
is still on his feet. The whistles blow. Let's see where they mark him. They're going to say he was down all the way back at the 44-yard line. Brookhart thought that he kept his feet. Guess they saw the knee go down at the 44. Final minute of play, third quarter. Husky's looking to salt this one away right now. Get a 21 point lead and uh, put a bow on it. Thompson split off towards the top. Wishbone look. The turn, the give, Gao. Yao waits for the hole to develop, and it finally does. Hang on to the ball, Cooper. Cooper goes out of bounds after the first down, and uh, that could have been a late flag right there. The Muscatine crowd wanted it. Not going to get it. They will get the first down, though. I think that's the loudest I've heard the Muscatine crowd in quite a while, even for a touchdown. They were not happy. Ball spotted at the 45. This is where I'm sensing a big play coming up. You've done that before. I know. I, out of the wishbone look again. And now a fumble. It, the opposite of a big play. Let's see who got on it. Muskies do get on it, so it, it is a, a big avoidance of disaster right there, is what we'll call it. Muskies actually gain a yard on that fumble. And that will bring us to the end of the third quarter. 12 minutes away from a big homecoming win. 28-14 Muskies lead, we'll be right back. Welcome to the future, imagined by visionaries. Championed by leaders and focused on results. Made real through hard work and the determination to build the things that people count on. Places where ideas are born, where progress fuels growth and strengthens communities. It's work that makes a difference. United Rentals, your beat in the future. We're here to help. When water service lines get damaged, customers often call us first. Remember, MPW is responsible for the water main. The water service line from the main to your home belongs to you. Damage is usually unexpected, and repairs can cost thousands. So don't wait until a problem occurs. Be prepared. Check your homeowner's policy and see if it's covered. If not, third-party protection plans are available for water and sewer. MPW also offers the utility loan program with 0% interest, and that may help. Learn more at mpw.org. Roland Glenbine, Chris Anderson, glad you could join us on homecoming. The Muskies on top right now by 14, looking to uh, salt this one away. Cooper Yao still on his feet, spins inside the 40 down to the 38. The emergence of Cooper Yao continues to impress week in and week out. Just added a much needed dimension to this offense. Absolutely. You know, here's the nice thing. Even though you're still staying on the ground 90% of the time, you can throw enough variation in that it's not just go slam people on the line in the box. Here's the give, Kozad. Kozad met at the line of scrimmage. Bounces forward for a yard and will bring up a third, or excuse me, a fourth down and three. And likely, uh, likely go for it here. Ball at the 37. It would be a 54 yard field goal. That's, it would be more uh, beneficial to get this first down and run some clock right now. Kozad and Yao in the backfield. Here's a 
An option play. Curtis has the first down. Got to hang out of the ball, young man. Looking for the sidelines. And has the uh, sticks moved again down to the 21. Curtis running that option play to perfection on that one. Well, that's where you take advantage. Everybody keys on Ty Kozad on a fourth and three. And you run option and fool everybody. Nice call there. Clock down to 10.29 left. Ball at the 21. Ty Kozad, three touchdowns on the night. Is the fourth one in store. Yao in motion to give to Kozad. Kozad hit right at the line and spins down to the 20-yard line. I'm hoping Ty scores on this drive with about seven minutes to go. Just saying. With seven minutes to go, huh? Yeah. I feel like I'm missing something. You are. I might explain it. Here's Cooper Yao. Yao ducks inside down to the 18-yard line. It would not be the first time. will not be the last. He's down near the 18. Is it as intriguing and interesting <laughs> as the crop circle, coin circle? You off? know, we're just going to have to wait and see if this happens. It's now down to 919 left. Pitches Kozad, Kozad, right in. There's a flag on the play. Kozad fumbles the ball. Got to get on that. We'll find out who's got the pigskin right now. And then we'll find out the flag. Muskie's got the ball back. Now we'll see who the flag's on. And the, the referee's mic is working. That's a new feature. That is. So wipe out the first down carry by Kozad. A little concerning being that he's put the ball on the ground now twice. Things just need to be cleaned up a little bit. We'd like to clean them up in wins, though. Clock ticking, 8.30 left. Time out, Muskies. And they'll take a time out. With 8.22 on the clock. It's kind of uh, waiting for that big play right now. It's just kind of been uh, a ho-hum second half, which is okay when you're winning. It absolutely is. <laughs> it's I mean, the clock is running, and they're there. They well, it's a timeout now, Roland. That's, they stopped the clock for those. You're right. They have asserted really almost their, their will on the West in this game. And it's nice to see that mentality coming out in them to understand that they can go out and actually cause the things to happen on the field, football field that they want to happen. This is a team that has matured a lot the last couple of weeks, and it's it's been fun to watch. Actually very parallel to the volleyball team this season. You know, they opened up against uh, Pleasant Valley, and, you know, opening up against PV is a, yeah, a tough call. Yeah. You, that's a tough draw any way you cut it. Um, they had... Bettendorf, I think it was in one of the first couple games as well. But since then, they have rattled off 
a couple of sweeps and have grown and, and have that go for the jugular get this game over mentality. Back to throw, Curtis lets it go, looking for Brookhart and overshot him. Not quite uh, on the same page on that one a little bit. But still, I like the I like the call, I like passing the ball there. Keeps the defense honest. And out comes the field goal unit. As Othmer will try to add three points, this will be a 40-yard attempt. One of the things I enjoy about watching Jackson Othmer play is his shoes. His excellent taste in shoes. You can always tell right where he is. Fumble! That is not how they threw that one up, so Curtis could not handle the snap. And West will get the ball back, still only trailing by 14. This game's not quite over yet, as the Muskies again fail to put it away. Even a field goal there would have made it a three-score game. Little mistakes, though, keeping that door open. West really has not moved the ball in the second half. Again, they'll come out with a four receiver set. Back to throw, Matson swings it out to his back. Tate, Tate gets across to 35, stays in bounds. They'll bring up a second down in about three. You know, watching the quarterback there, it didn't look like he was even really looking to throw down the field. It looked like that was where he was you know, it might have been designed that he was supposed to, but it looked like he was ready to dump it from the beginning. Five receivers set, empty backfield now for Madsen. Muskie is showing some pressure, and a flag before the ball is snapped. Some movement up front. 63 offense, five yards, still third down. Penalty on the West lineman, and that will push it back. A big five yards, makes it second and eight. And just as importantly, they'll wind the clock down to seven and a half minutes left. Same look, five receivers, same play. Back to throw. They go down a short pass, a little crossing route to Marvin Neely, and the Muskies will take that all day long. A three-yard gain brings up a third and five. And again, keeps that clock running. Here comes pressure up the middle. Oh, Cooper Yao in the face of Matson. All Matson could do was throw it away. Frankie there also along with Yao. And now fourth down, just 6.47 left. West is in a position where they uh, might have to go for this right here. We'll see what Coach Nunn decides. Well, you know, at this point, you're gonna have to go for things like this at some point the rest of this game. So if you've got confidence in your offense, now is just a, as good of a time as any to start trying to make those plays. Well, the official stop. The play clock, and they're all kind of uh, huddled up discussing something right now as Coach Nunn has decided to punt it away. Decided to do the opposite of what Chris would do, which is usually a good call. It is absolutely a good call. <laughs> well, they're down, to, I, they're down to two timeouts left. And I wasn't necessarily implying that you should go for a fourth and five on your own 35 with six minutes left, but it was, you're gonna start thinking about it. You're gonna have to make those kinds yeah, of plays. It, I wouldn't blame a coach for going for it there because you do need to score twice. And fourth and five is a makeable right. amount. And, and if you're Muscatine right now, you've got to be alert, stay home and be aware of a fake right here. 
So we got some clock issues going on right now. So had Ty Kozad scored there, that would have been his fourth touchdown of the night. Four score, seven minutes to go. Four score, seven. Well, the Muskies have four scores. So, I mean, we could go. But, yes. I would have been a little Abraham Lincoln. How long have you had that in your back pocket? I just came up with it. There's the fake. And I don't think he got it. So, that, uh, the Muskies did a good job. Stayed home right there. We called it. Something didn't oh, add up right there. You, short, uh, first down. That is a great job right there, and the Muskies now are in great position. Up 14 with the ball down to the 35. But at, at that, you know, we hate second-guessing coaching. We hate to do it. But why not just keep the offense out there and go for it on fourth and five? If you're gonna, if you're gonna go, yeah. I mean, other than you know, you had the successful sneak onside kick. Maybe you're thinking they aren't going to be paying attention and just pull it off. And now West has to burn a timeout with the clock stopped. And that's brutal right there for the Falcons. And that's a, another uh, advantage to Muscatine. Now the West with just one timeout remaining as the officials running off the field. <laughs> <Well>. <laughs> You know, and that's one of those things where you've got to respect the West coaches in this scenario because they're they're playing to win, right? They're still trying to find a way to come back. They haven't quit. They haven't, you know, they're not just kind of dialing it in. But I do like where the Muskies are at, and I like how they're being able to keep that pressure on. Well, I, in, in, to finish the point on the fake punt, you know, your spider senses were tingling right there. You knew that was a highly likely fake. Right. And, and Muscatine was ready for it and stopped it. So the uh, official gets his uh, sprints in during the timeout, and we're all set to go. Just 6.44 left. Still feel like we got one more touchdown to come in. That's it? Yeah, I feel like that's, that's plenty. That's the difference between you and me. You're greedy. Here's Ty. Ty, 30, 25, 20. And brought down around the 18-yard line. I'm just not putting a cap on the possibilities of the night. An 18-yard scamper for Ty Kozad. What do you have him for on the night now? I have him for 226 yards and, and three touchdowns. About to be four touchdowns. A lot of confusion on that West defense as to who's in and who's out. Finally got that figured out. Play clock has 30 seconds on it, so the Muskies are in no hurry to get this snap off. As the clock's down to 6.25 left. Pozad and Yao in the backfield. Brookhart will split off as a wing to the top of your screen. Curtis continues to milk that clock. Here's the pitch, Kozad. Kozad needs a block. Ducks inside, spins, five, touchdown, tie, number four on the night. Four score and almost seven to go. And six to go. <laughs> it's fun watching when he takes those first hits, how well he keeps his feet moving. Yes, his balance is still there. It's coming back for sure. Everything's coming back. And I still think there's another gear there. There is, there's no doubt. Oh, 
Othmer punches another one through. He's perfect on the night. And the Muskies are going to be celebrating homecoming this evening. They now lead 35 to 14 midway through the fourth quarter. River Rehab Physical Therapy. Feel better, move forward. We are looking for a zero turn one. At Hustler Turf, quality matters. Can I test drive that one? In the store? <laughs> Even in the buying experience, we know you want to buy from someone who knows. Back here at Muscatine High School, 35-14. Jackson Othmer needs to add another touchback to his night. Pad the stats a little bit, does just that. First kick at the end zone for a touchback. First and 10 Falcons from their own 20. So now if you're the Falcons, yes. how do you disguise the fact that you have to score a whole lot of points in not a lot of time and trick the defense into allowing you to do that. Well, you go back to what you did to end the first half, right? I mean, they knew you were going to throw the ball. They know you're throwing the ball now. And there they go. Meter, jump ball, comes down with it. This West team has shown the ability to move the ball quickly. That's why you're glad you're up by 21 right now. That reminded me of an old 500 game where you just absolutely throw it and let somebody go get it. Meter is their top receiver, and those two have hooked up a lot this year. That's him back to throw. We'll swing it out. Dangerous pass over the head of the running back, Tate. And second and 10 with five and a half to go. Yeah, I mean, you just got to go right now and you got to try to maybe hit Neely over the middle like they did towards the end of the first half. It's a, it's a long road to hoe. This is kind of the opposite of last year's game at Brady Street, a 35-13 West win. Ooh. Tate incomplete there. That that game must have team scored late. And that one and then tried the onside kick, kind of in the same position that uh, West is in this year in this game. Yeah, that was the game we got to broadcast from the bleachers. From yeah, week nine of the season outside. It was chilly. Oh, it was fun. Back to throw, looking deep, throws it up, jump ball of sorts, and uh, just out uh, ahead of meter. Lopez on the coverage, and now fourth and 10 at the 50. This is a go forward situation for West. And if you're a defensive lineman right now, you got the ears pinned back, thinking sack. And this is the one where the mentality comes in. Can the Muskie defense put it away right here? Empty backfield. And now we got a flag. And I think number 63 was maybe caught a little bit. It's, he's not happy with himself. So that makes it fourth and 15. Means the quarterback's gonna have to hold on to the ball for another second and a half and give the defensive line just a little more time for Gao and Frankie and, and the gang to try to end this in style. Yeah. 
Pressure on. Here it comes. There, now. It comes. there it comes Frankie. And they end it in style. And although Frankie is not looking like he's popping up very quickly. That is not what you want to see there. One of your top defensive players on the ground and the trainer's quickly out to check on him. It's Frankie and Yao. It sounds like one of those police dramas from the it, 80s, right? It, Frankie and Yao? It does, it does. Like a, a yeah, Zoli and scoop. Isles or whatever it was. Yes. Yeah, kind of like but here's the question, is it is it a serious procedural or is it more of like a buddy comedy? Yeah, definitely buddy comedy. I don't know. They're pretty serious out there. Yeah. Well, that's a pretty serious moment right now, and that's they're gonna get him up to his feet now, which is good. We'll see how much not putting a whole lot of pressure on that left leg so uh, that's going to be the night for Mr. Frankie and hopefully it's not as bad as it looks right now and he'll be able to uh, take the field next week but uh, that definitely puts a little bit of a damper on the evening tremendous Penetration by the Muskie front line, though. Yeah, I like them. They make me look good. Yeah, I do. So, a whole bunch of new players out there right now. Still, Curtis as he hands off. A nice game there down to the 28 yard line. That's Ty, Ty Cunin. Cunin, I believe. Cunin, okay. Sophomore. I don't want it to go under the bleachers. <laughs> yeah. Again to Cunin. Cunin. After a gain of maybe a yard on the play. Bring up a third down and five as we approach the four minute mark. The next snap will occur under four minutes to play. He's pleading his case right now. He was in a three-point stance and then came up to a two-point stance. And I think that's why the, the penalty is called. On Augustus Smiley. Oh. Yes. We may have had the wrong roster in front of us. Yeah, it's been one of those days. So there's Sebastian Gore on the carry. Your boy, the ball carrier. Five foot nine junior. So 
Fourth down in 10, clock under three minutes to play. And this might be a time to take a delay of game and punt situation. Coach Hawkins could call timeout, and he does elect to go that route, so the Muskies will burn the timeout after taking every second they can off the play clock and now decide what they want to do here on fourth down and 10. And the, the Muskies are going to go to three and two on the season. And you know, you, you look at the ESPN website, if you look at baseball standings, they got, you know, whatever your record is. And at the very end of it, playoff chances, right? Mm -hmm. Somehow they come up with this 99%, right. yep. 70%. This win-loss tonight, I mean, this takes you to about, honestly, about an 85% chance to make the playoffs now. I mean, if you lost this, I think it would have been down to about a 10%. That's how big this one game is. You got four games left. You got to find a way to win at least two of them. And you have two tough games and two very winnable games left. So let's just go get all four. And there's nothing to the way this team's playing. Linmar better look out. It's, we're not putting that in the loss column right now. But that's definitely a game where I don't think you expected to win to start the year. You didn't, you didn't expect to have that one as one you needed. Right. There's uh, the keeper. Well, that was the Cooper Yao play right yeah. there without the without reverse. The, yep. Angel Martinez, the ball carrier. Angel Martinez gets a couple of yards, and that will turn the ball over on downs back to West. But yeah, the way they're playing, I I wouldn't put that past them getting the win over Linmar. I I think that game is definitely in play. And boy, if you can snatch one there, that then hey. All of a sudden, you know, six and three is in play, and that would be a chance of maybe hosting a playoff game. All kinds of neat things we can talk about here after we keep getting wins. It's amazing how that works. Here's the ball deflected, deflected. And, and incomplete. Well, the trainer's no longer looking at Frankie, which is, I think, a good sign. We'll see how that all plays out. You, you never know. We don't want to speculate on an injury, but but we're hoping maybe just a, a sprain or twist it. We'll, we'll find out and hope for the best on that. Very uh, He's integral. He's going to dance tomorrow night. Very integral part. I don't know if that's going to happen now. He can, he can go, but it's really a, maybe a perfect situation, right? You get to go to the dance, but you don't actually have to go out and dance now. You just hang out at the table, drink some punch, and hang out with the guys, and, and you're not a bad boyfriend or not a bad date for not out there dancing because, hey, I'm injured. I wish I would have thought of that. Right? I'm not that smart. Though. It's brilliant. Really Back to throw, deep over the middle and over shot defender. And we're not making light of the injury. We're no, not. No. no. If anything, we're just making light of our high school days. Yeah, absolutely making fun of my high school days. <laughs> it's very easy because they all happened right here. Oh, I bet you cut a rug though. I most certainly did not. You are speaking with a man that cannot clap in rhythm. <laughs> Second and 10, Madsen looking deep, throws it down the sidelines, and again, does not connect with meter. <laughs> nice coverage out there again by Aiden Lopez.
So I want to thank, thank everyone again hanging out with us tonight, watching some Musk team football, get a big win here, and then invite you back next week. No need to make that long road trip to Marion. Although if you do, it is a very nice facility. It is. Under pressure, Pursuit. throw up for grabs, and Brookhart knocks it down. Uh, he's pumped, but I think he knows he had a chance to pick one there. Yeah, but Brookhart pass breakup. That'll bring up fourth down. Fourth down. And final gasp here for the Falcons. This is going to be back-to-back -back wins against a 3-0 team and a 3-1 team. You would think that would help out on the strength of schedule factor. Not that the power rankings by Bound have really any Drill caught out there, but short of oh, the yard to gain, and the ball will be turned over to the Muskies. They, they have no force in the fact, but they always look good. And they'll be able to just take a few knees here and uh, take off the cleats, put the dancing shoes on. It's going to be a happy homecoming tomorrow. You know, I think part of the uh, success here is I think most of them got all their rage out on that vehicle sitting right outside the front gate. Get all pumped up, get all your rage out, be nice and warm. A little fundraiser out there. I'm not sure who donated the vehicle. But uh, it, it basically had a rager right out in front. Nice carry on first down. Door the ball carrier. That uh, will move the chains. About 11 yard gain for Sebastian Gore. With the tackle. And the foul 44. And that's another musky first down. Now maybe they'll take him. Yeah. That's the thing is, that you, you want to take the knee, but you also want to give these guys some carries because they practice hard too. And, you know, with the injury situations floating around there, having more guys with experience with the ball is always a good thing. And now Curtis will take the knee, and that will do it tonight for Muscatine. A big, big win. And Darnell's over there dancing. <laughs> You know it's over. Not when the fat lady sings, but when Darnell, Darnell dances. Yep. I feel like that could be a poster. It's not over till Darnell dances. Work on that. I know a guy. And that will do it tonight. A big homecoming win for your Muskies. They're now three and two on the season as they knock off the West Falcons 35 to 14. Talking player of the game and uh, I don't know how you not give it to Ty Kozad four touchdowns. I think it, ha it has to be. Four touchdowns. I have him for 244 yards rushing. His high mark on the season is he's now over 500 on the season despite missing basically three games, two and, a, two and three quarters. And this uh, Musk team, this is, you know, this is going to open some eyes around the state, I think. This yeah, is this not is a pushover anymore. This is a, a playoff quality team. Yeah, this and you know, even you know, let's say worst case scenario, things don't go right down the stretch. It's still a team that's pushing that envelope, right? Like worst case scenario, you've still transformed it into a team that's taking every effort and energy to get the entire team down to the end zone. 
Well, last year managed just three wins all season. This year, you're sitting at three and two with four games to go. And the, the road gets tougher next week as we go uh, on the road to Linmar. Is that Bowen Camp? And then uh, Pleasant Valley comes to town in 14 days. So that's what uh, the immediate future looks for this Muscatine team. But I tell you what, who knows? I think the sky's the limit at this point. I mean, I think if they come ready to play, everybody's healthy. I, I think there's not too many teams that they can't take all four quarters with. Yep, you, you hope for the best right now with with Frankie. And uh, he's still limping pretty bad right now, but uh, hopefully that's nothing more than an ankle sprain. And so is Bowman Camp, so same situation there. Yep, so that's what lies ahead, but boy, a, a great night tonight as uh, the Muskies fell down uh, behind 7 nothing early, but uh, stormed and, right back. And I suppose technically prove me wrong because they did come from behind. Came from behind. Technically. Once again, uh, proving you wrong. If that's how they're gonna prove me wrong, I'm in, I'm in. Well, that's going to do it for us tonight. Glad you could join us here on the Discover Muskie Sports Network. Uh, Muskie's big winners on homecoming, 35 to 14. Until uh, next week, up in Marion, everybody. Uh, for Chris Anderson and uh, the rest of the crew, I'm Roland Glombine saying have a great night, everybody.